Welcome to Meyer Sports of All Sorts. Good evening, everyone. Whether you're a kid or you're an all-grown-up kid, there are things you dream about, maybe playing in the big game or maybe just going to the big game. Brandon Phillips is going to the Major League All-Star game for the very first time a week from Tuesday. Phillips is having an All-Star season, and National League manager Charlie Manuel felt he deserved to be in Anaheim with the All-Stars. Scott Rowland, he's going too. He's been selected to five All-Star games in the past. He's played in three. This is one that has to be a little special because many baseball fans thought he was at the end of his career. Well, not yet. And Arthur Rhodes is going to the All-Star game. What a great story he is. 40 years old, he's been in the major since 1991. This will be his very first All-Star appearance. For some, going to the All-Star game might be the ultimate. Tom Walsh of Cincinnati has come up with the ultimate sports list. Tom Walsh is with us tonight. I, I was intrigued when I heard about this and what the ultimate sports list is. First of all, you must be the ultimate sports fan then, I take it, huh? I gotta be close, yeah. <laughs> Are you? I mean, do you like to go to different events and see different things that you've, you've kind of only seen on TV in the past? You know, it's funny, John, because I, I love to travel and I love sports and, and so going to these different events obviously ties the two of those together. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've made a point at different you know, times in my life if I'm somewhere you know, to try to get to a game or an event that's in that area. So what does the, why, why the ultimate sports list? Why did you come up with this and why did you call it that? Well, in 1996, if you'll remember, Cincinnati hosted the NCAA Hockey Championship. Mm -hmm. And I worked on that committee with Steve Cady from Miami and Don Schumacher. And part of my duty was to go to the regional tournament in Albany, New York the week before and do a little marketing and meet with the teams that were coming to Cincinnati. Well, I had some time to kill mm -hmm. and looked at a map. I don't know how I figured it out, but one day I went east and I went to the, to the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. It was about an hour away. Sure. And the next day I went west to Cooperstown and went to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh -huh. And as I was driving back from Cooperstown, I thought, this is fun. I mean, what other events are out there that, I, that I'd like to go see? And on the flight back from Albany, uh, I started writing down a list. And I came up with about 50 events that I'd like to see at some point in my life. And uh, contemplated for a while writing a book, and I probably had about a 10-year case of writer's block. And about two years ago, I said, you know what, this needs to be a website. It needs to be interactive, and it, it, it needs to allow people to, to you know, figure out their list, go to the events on our list, and, and so we started working towards that. Is it fair to call it a bucket list for sports fans? Yeah, I, I, I shy away from the term bucket list because I feel like that's a little bit overused, mm -hmm. but that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's people can sit down and say, these are the events that I want to go to, and, and when I go to them, I'm going to check them off my list. Yeah, and I think with the TV and being able to see everything now, there's more things that inspire us to want to do things, whether it's World Cup soccer, whether it's Wimbledon, whether it's the Final Four. I think probably more so than when I was a kid, you say, wow, I'd like to be part of that. Right, and, and what we really focus on is the whole event, not just you know, what happens on the field of play. Because there's a whole, you know, if you go to the Alabama-Auburn game, for example, there's a whole day of, really a whole week of activities that, that go on around that game, you know, between the tailgates and, and everything else. And that's what we want to try to help people understand uh, and, and really help experience is beyond just what happens on the field of play, you know, the rest of the day. Okay. Let's help out Tom tonight. We're going to talk about his list that he and his followers have put together on his website. But we'd like to add your list, your wants. Give us a call. We'd like to hear from you. Say your top one, two, or three events that you would love to be at. Uh, where would you like to travel and sit in the stands? What is your ultimate list? 749-9999 is our telephone number. Our website is soas at wcpo.com. That's our email. But first, we have a winner and we have a question. It happens at this time every week in the Meyer Mindbender. Last week, we asked about the 40th anniversary of the opening of Riverfront Stadium. We asked who was the first Cincinnati player to hit a home run there. The first Cincinnati player to hit a home run was Tommy Helms. I believe it was Tommy's only home run of the season. Ed Hearn of Cincinnati, remember that fact. Ed will receive a $50 gift card from Meyer. Congratulations to Ed. 
That leads us into this week's Meyer Mindbender. It was July 4th of 1939 that Lou Gehrig told the fans at Yankee Stadium that he was the luckiest man on the face of the earth. In the movie Pride of the Yankees, who played the role of Lou Gehrig? I want the actor who played the Iron Horse in the Pride of the Yankees. Here's how you enter. Go to WCPO.com, click on Sports, scroll down, you'll see the Meyer Mindbender logo. That's where you can enter, or by regular mail, just send a card with your answer to Meyer Mindbender, WCPO Sports 1720 Gilbert, Cincinnati, 45202. And that's the Meyer Mindbender for tonight. Back with the ultimate sports list right after this. Welcome to Meyer Sports of All Sorts. Here's your chance to be a part of Cincinnati's longest-running sports talk show. Call us at 749-9999 or send us an email. It's time for the clean sweep provided each week by Teasdale Fenton. Another impressive sweep through Wimbledon Field by Rafael Nadal. Thomas Burdich, who had upset Roger Federer, was just another obstacle along the way that Nadal was able to clear. It took the left-hander just over two hours to win the three-setter and take the grass court title for the second time. In his last five Grand Slam finals, Nadal is unbeatable 5-0. and And that's a clean sweep brought to you each week by Teasdale Fenton. Welcome back, everyone. Tom Walsh has put together the ultimate sports list. You might agree with it, you might not, but that's the fun that these kind of things provide. You can see a lot by going to TUSL.com, the ultimate sports list, TUSL. Now, number 10 on the list, the Indianapolis 500. This is one that might surprise a lot of people because this is an event that seems to have lost a lot of luster over the years. I'm sure NASCAR fans would say they'd rather be at Daytona, but uh, I'll tell you what, Indianapolis is still... Uh, one of the great venues of sports. It's so big when you first walk in, and uh, obviously a lot of people voted and, and felt this was still one of the big things. Well, and you know, it's still the largest single attended one day sporting event in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think Daytona came in 20th, and I think that's where the NASCAR fans might take exception. But even if Indy's lost a little bit of its luster, I mean, there's still more people there. Uh, than, than any event, than any event in the world each year. How did you go and get people to vote on developing their list, what 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 they liked, and what kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, we wanted to have a voting system that took the bias out, so that if a certain group of people crashed the system, you know, we didn't have a high school game from Oregon and ahead of the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, so, in, in, on the front page of the website, we've got a little section called the voting booth, and basically, in the voting booth, you're given a choice of two events, and it says which would you rather attend, and it might, and it's random. It might say Reds opening day or Cincinnati Xavier basketball game, mm -hmm. and you pick one. And then you get the next one. And, and so you go through that cycle. And we had about uh, 25,000 votes over the month of March and April. And we had fans from, I think, 41 of the 50 states. Oh, that's that great. That's what I was going to ask. I didn't want it all from Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so we reached out to people around the country. It was kind of a beta test for the website. Uh, but we got these 25,000 votes. And then as you, each of the events started to develop a record. You know, so one event might be 501, and one event might be 1 in 500. So we were able to start to put them in order. Because we started with over 200 events, and we came up with 150. So, and so you boiled it down to 150. Right. And, and the 150 is actually 100 from the United States and 50 international. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to find the top 100 here, the top 50 around the rest of the world. And frankly, we'd like to bulk up the events around the rest of the world. Because we did the best we could to get the nominees you know, in there, but I'm sure there are things out there that, that, uh, that we're not familiar with. And that's part of the fun of the process, because as people go in and do their own list, if there's, if there's an event that's not on our list, if it's on our list, they can grab it and put it to their list. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that's not on ours, they can add it. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a nominating process Were there for any us. of those that as somebody suggested, and you go, oh, I never even thought about that. I'd love to go to that sort of thing, too. Well. One, one that I had, was not aware of is and, and as I was going through doing the research and I was looking for, for horse races, because I know there's obviously we've got the Derby down the road and we've got you know, the Belmont and the Preakness. Yeah. Um, 
And, and as, as I was looking at lists of, of, uh, of, of horse races, I found one in Melbourne, Australia called the Melbourne Cup. Mm -hmm. And it's on a Tuesday afternoon in November, actually election day here, they have a horse race. And the entire city of Melbourne shuts down for the day. <laughs> and it's all about this horse race. And, and so I said, that's got, and that's on the list. Um, so there were little, as you do the research, I came up with ones that I'd never heard of. But as you looked at them, said, yeah, they have to be on there. Okay, 749-9999 is our number. I'm not sure it'll even make the ultimate sports list, but it gets national TV coverage, and a lot of people flock to see it every year. New York's Coney Island, a lot of people were grilling out and eating out today, but it was an entirely different level of grilling and eating here. This was competition, big league eaters, members of major league eating. Some of them a little scary like this sloppy eater with a mohawk, but nobody measures up to the legendary Joey Chestnut, who ate 54 hot dogs in 10 minutes to win the title for the fourth year in a row. Six-time champion Kobayashi was not there because of a contract dispute, and he was arrested for trying to crack the celebration, obviously hungering for more attention. Back right after this. Welcome to Meyer Sports of All Sorts. Here's your chance to be a part of Cincinnati's longest-running sports talk show. Call us at 749-9999 or send us an email 